I got a question in the comment how to create a transition from scene A to scene B in the 3D space. So nothing easier than that my friend and today that's what we're gonna do. So if we jump straight into After Effects, first we need a composition. So I'm gonna create a simple one 1080 by 1920, let's hit OK. And now this is not a tutorial about 3D editing from scratch, so we're just gonna speed run through this process. I'm gonna right click, go to new, camera, I'm gonna choose a preset of 35, hit OK. OK again, create a new null object. Parent the camera to the null, we could rename it. Turn on the 3D, we're gonna select these two, change the color, and now we're gonna add the text. So we're gonna call it first scene, let's change it to white, let's recenter, and then from this position we're gonna move to another scene, but we also need to create the depth. So how I go about it is just adding the background. So for this I'm gonna support myself with Pro Edit Pack, you can find it in the description. I'm gonna go to Animated Backgrounds, what do we choose? I'm gonna take one from Shadow Grid, Let's take HD because we're working with HD comp and we're gonna grab maybe this. These backgrounds have really cool beginning. They are kind of loading up. So for example, if you were to overlap them and then added some keyframes for opacity, it would look like that. Yeah, that's a pretty cool option. So we're gonna work with these two backgrounds. I'm gonna trim the beginning because we don't really need that animation here. We're just gonna leave it like that. And then we're gonna take that beginning and trim it as well. We're gonna drag these two under first scene and then we're gonna turn them all into 3D. So now we're just gonna create a simple movement for the first scene. It's not our primary interest, but let's just make something happen here. So for this, I'm gonna open up Cam Control 1, go to transform, keyframe position, move back. And now with Y value for position, we're gonna drag it downwards. I'm gonna select these two, easy ease them, go to the graph editor and we're gonna create a peak on the left. Let's go back. And now obviously we need to create the separation between the text and the background. So with Z position, I'm gonna drag it away. Now let's increase the scale, it's too much. Like 350 should be maybe a little bit more, 450 should be fine. Okay, that's pretty cool. And now we're getting into the most important part of the tutorial, which is moving from scene A to scene B. So for this, we're gonna duplicate cam control one, hit U, delete the last keyframe, parent one to two. And here we have our second background. So if we zoom out in our custom view one, we could place that background behind the camera. Now we're gonna increase the scale. Maybe we could drag it a little bit to the right, just like that. So if we looked at it from the side, that's how it's looking. And now we need to create a movement. So we parented cam control one to cam control two, and now this is our cam controller. So if I drag Z position, you're gonna notice that we're moving away. And now I kind of wanna get in front of that background. So if we get here, it's gonna be perfectly centered. We're just gonna increase the scale for this, maybe even more. A little adjustment, we're gonna move even more backwards. Okay, let's adjust the timing. And now we got a problem with the background because it's just randomly popping up, which is not really looking that great. So we'll fix it in a second. I'm just gonna create another text. So let's duplicate this one and we're gonna rename it to second scene, just like that. So everything about that scene just seems off. First of all, the movement sucks. And second of all, two assets are popping up out of nowhere. So in order to fix it, we need to select these two keyframes, go to the graph editor, and now instead of just hitting easy ease for these keyframes, we're gonna create a peak in the middle. Something like that should do. So now that peak is making the movement slow in the beginning, then fast in the middle, and then slow again at the end. All right, so we got one thing fixed, but we also need to fix our assets. I'm just gonna adjust Z position here even more. I'm gonna increase the scale. And that's what we got. So now the magical component is adding opacity keyframes. So I'm just gonna close down everything. I'm gonna head over to our second background and we're gonna hit T on the keyboard. I'm gonna click the stopwatch for opacity, move backwards, and we're gonna change it to zero. So now as we're moving backwards, we're gonna notice that we don't have that harsh pop-up effect, but we have a nice fade in. It's going on for a little too long. So we're just gonna squeeze in the keyframes and I'm gonna hit F9. It's already much better and we could do the same for our second scene text. So I'm gonna paste it here and let's adjust the timing. And now we got already a nice transition between two scenes. But one thing I really like doing instead of the opacity keyframes is playing around with masks. So for this, I'm gonna head over to our second background. I'm gonna go to ellipse tool. Let's create a small circle in the middle. I'm gonna hit invert it. Let's turn off visibility for this so we can see. So basically we have a little dot in the middle. So I'm gonna open up properties for mask and I'm gonna change expansion to a negative number. So we're closing down the mask, just like so. Let's hit the stopwatch. And now somewhere at this position, we're gonna increase the pixels. So now we should have such an effect. Obviously it's looking bad, but if we edit mask feather, it's not gonna be as harsh on the outline and will make the whole thing much more pleasant for the eye. So let's say 200. Okay, we got something here. 
Now let's adjust the timing. I'm gonna increase the space and let's ease the keyframes. Okay, starts to look pretty good. I could increase the mask feather to 250 and move back the whole layer. I'm gonna turn the visibility back on for the second scene and let's see. Just because of the mask feather, the whole scene is becoming more seamless. I think I would even slow it down a little bit. So increase the space between keyframes. But now we need to move back the whole layer. Yeah, that's looking good to me. So basically, that's the way I go about transitioning between one scene to another. Hope you found it valuable and it answers the question in the comment. Let's wrap it up. You can check out the editing shift in the description. And I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.